And I want to educate Barack Obama. Uh, we did send a copy of uh, Liberty and Tyranny to the White House, and I'm sure it was used as toilet paper uh, because they get confused over there between uh, toilet paper and good books. But anyway, we don't. Now, Barack Obama, I know you weren't taught this by the communist Frank in Hawaii and your Saul Linsky readings, but let me educate you because God knows you need an education. The free market is the most transformative of economic systems. It fosters creativity and inventiveness. It produces new industries, products, and services as it improves upon existing ones. And with millions of individuals freely engaged in an infinite number and variety of transactions every day, it's impossible to even conceive all the changes and plans for changes occurring in the economy at any given time. I thought you'd like change. The free market creates more wealth and opportunities for more people than any other economic system. The conservative sees in the free market the harmony of interests and rules of cooperation that underlie the civil society. The free market promotes self-worth, self-sufficiency, shared values and honest dealings, which enhance, which enhance the individual, the family and the community. The free market is an intricate system of voluntary economic, social, and cultural interactions that are motivated by the desires and needs of the individual and the community. The key to understanding the free market is private property. Private property is the material manifestation of the individual's labor. That is the material value created from the intellectual and or physical labor of the individual which may take the form of income, real property, or intellectual property. And just as life is finite, so too is the extent of one's labor. Therefore, taxation of private property or the regulation of such property so as to reduce its value can become, in effect, a form of servitude, particularly if the dispossession results from illegitimate and arbitrary state action. We took $68 billion from the banks. The Marxist class struggle formulation which pits the proletariat, that is the working class, against the bourgeois, the wealthy merchant class, still serves as the principal theoretical and rhetorical justification for the status of salt on the free market. And you know I'm right. I took it from the bankers. Yet, it's an anathema to the free market. In that the individual has unto himself the power to make of himself what he chooses. There is no static class structure layered atop the free market in this country. The free market is a mutable, dynamic, and vibrant system of individual interactions that engages all aspects of the human character. It is a vital bulwark against statism, and that's why Obama hates it. His assault on the free market is relentless. And the assault on the free market is unconstitutional. And I added, in the name of economic justice and equality, the status creates the perception of class struggle through a variety of inventions. Now, I want to play these two cuts once more, because they say everything you need to know about this man and his attitude. How he despises you. How he rejects the capitalist system. And how he rejects the Constitution. Cut one. Obama in Maine yesterday. Go. $68 billion. $68 billion. It was going to banks and financial institutions. We've just taken that money from the banks, from the financial institutions. Stunning. It's absolutely stunning. And then today in North Carolina, cut two. Go. I don't want government any more than is necessary, but there are some things that... Bob or any CEO can invest in. Bob's not going to build the roads to get to Selgard. No company is going to make investments for a public good. Ladies and gentlemen, enterprises exist, small, medium, and large, because they produce services and goods that you want, if not need, or they go out of business. That's the public good. They create wealth. They create jobs. They create opportunities. They put the food on the table of millions and millions of families. They build the homes and the apartments that we live in. The government doesn't do any of that. It can't do any of that. The government doesn't respond 
to what the public needs or wants. These politicians decide what the public needs or wants. And then they go through a long period of lying and making false promises to persuade enough of the public to go along. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. For the statist, lying is a necessity. When they run for office, they have to lie. The status creates these rosy pictures for which they're never held to account and which will never be painted in reality. They lie. We try to use facts and evidence. We bring up the Constitution and the Declaration. We talk about history and economics. And he goes on, we took $68 billion dollars from the banks and financial institutions. And he's proud of it. That's class warfare. That's provocative. It's provocative language. It's a provocative policy. And they wonder why we're upset. No company is going to make investments for a public good. Companies exist because the public needs them. Electric companies, coal companies... Automobile companies, retailers, you name it. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. In fact, it's a wonderful thing. You know, when I was a young man, how old was I? I think 19. There was a small group of us that went on a uh, kind of a quick trip to Europe. And among other things, we took that little bus ride through Checkpoint Charlie into East Germany. You go from West Berlin, as it was called then, into East Berlin. And it's night and day. It's like North Korea was and South Korea. They had one street where they would take you with the phony car dealership and phony restaurant and a few of that. But everything behind it was basically a ghetto. It was a prison state. When you look at the satellite, nighttime satellite views of the Korean Peninsula, at night the north is perfectly dark and the south is lit up like a Christmas tree. Is North Korea operating in the public interest for the public good? Or is South Korea? Does socialism and its various progeny work for the public good? Or does capitalism? This man, Obama, doesn't get it. He's an ideologue. He's perfectly happy if jobs are created in the bureaucracy and lost in the private sector. The private sector is the enemy. You see, this is what the David Brookses and David Frums and some of the other repubics and pseudo-conservatives simply don't get. They're hallucinating. They're delusional too. They are what I call in liberty and tyranny neo-statists. They don't really oppose what's going on. In fact, they give it voice often. They've already surrendered. They've already accepted it as inevitable. They've given up the fight. They just want us all to go along with them, and we won't. Yes, Mr. Obama, you took $68 billion from private citizens, and if you were in the private sector, you'd be in prison the rest of your life. As it is now, you're praised for your wisdom and your compassion. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. 